What is going on? Today, we're going to be looking at the stats behind Darcy Moore's drop-off, what it was like last year, what he's like this year, and is Nathan Murphy's absence really making a difference? Let's get into it. So, this year, and just recently over the last few weeks, even the last week, we've... Um, well, the media, AFL media has, has said a lot about Darcy Moore, you know. Kane Corns has said that um, he plays one good game in every six games recently. Um, and they were, they were fighting about it on Footy Classified with Sam McClure. You know, uh, Kane Corns is saying that Darcy Moore isn't up to it at the moment and showed some footage. You went on to say that he plays one good game in every six. Yeah, in, in his current form, I did. No, no, you said over his career, he no, played one good no, game in every I six. I said right now, he's playing one good game in every six. I, think, I said he's not the player. I think that's incredibly disrespectful to a premiership well, captain. Well, I'm just speaking facts here, Sam. How many coaches... No, 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 you're not speaking facts, you're speaking How many coaches... I think he's out of form. I just think the language that you use, you compared him to Jacob Wiedering. He's nothing like Jacob Wiedering. They play different positions. No, is this, they're, is they're, this Billy Frampton, right? Do you think he's no, hurt Billy Frampton was actually playing as well. brought into Collingwood for that specific uh, reason. As a, Darcy as, Moore's as not as supposed to play on Benji. You think Billy Frampton is their number one primary shutdown defender? But he's supposed to play on the big So Zerk Thatcher go and torches Max King, who's Ben's brother. I just think your language sometimes around these guys. I think, I, think that is, I, think I think it's factual. I'm We're at round 16, Sam. He's, not, yeah, he's, he's, he's out of not form, but he doesn't play one good game was. in every and six. I, and I don't just say things for the sake of it. This is some of the vision that, that he was on display against oh, Gold Coast. His timing is off, as I said. That he's missing spoils. He comes off his man at the wrong time. He gets a lot of goals kicked on him. He doesn't impact offensively. He doesn't intercept the mark like the other best defenders do. Well, what's that press there? That's not a player who's captain of a premiership team who probably gets paid 900000 for the year. These are the facts, Sam. We made a lot of errors earlier on this year, which we've shown as well. One good game in every six may have actually been generous. Oh, now you're, you're doubling down. No, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just saying I've done some further research into it. It may have been generous. OK. Thank you, Kane. And look, as a Collingwood supporter, and any Collingwood supporter will tell you this, Darcy Moore, to the eye, doesn't look up to it. And... Um, that could be because of a change of role. It could be because of Nathan Murphy's um, absence. It could be a, a whole variety of things. But Darcy Moore looks a shadow of his All-Australian self, even, you know, 2023. And I, I know that 2023, towards the end of the year, he sort of limped to the line a little bit. So even then, he wasn't the full Darcy Moore package that we were used to, like that sort of All-Australian uh, Darcy Moore. But this year, it seems that at the start of the year, it was very much adjusting to a new role. I think he was trying to play the Nathan Murphy role and the Darcy Moore role of 2022-2023. And he just couldn't get the balance right. He has changed his role a little bit more. And we'll look at, at the stats um, a little bit later on in this video. But to the eye recently, he's just not doing what we know and love from Moore. He's not intercept marking um, a lot. He's he's not backing himself. And I think that's the, the biggest thing. It's it's belief. And, you know, you see it a lot when we were 0-3. Um, as a captain of the football club, how does he, you know, garner this belief in himself and in, and in the team? And then thankfully, we turned it around. He started having a few couple of games. But now he has dropped off. And, you know, it says a lot about our defense just in general. We've been conceding really high um, points against. Uh, our defenders aren't really defending as well as they should be. You know, Billy Frampton, when he's back down there, Isaac Quainall isn't what he was last season. Uh, Jeremy Howe has have been having to switch forward. We've had Charlie Dean a little bit in there as well. Um, you know, Johnny Noble, uh, Markov, they're playing together. So it's as much as our forward line has been a patchwork, our back line, even though it's sort of the same six, seven, eight guys, besides Nathan Murphy not being there, it feels like roles have changed and tactics have changed, transition has changed. A lot of things have changed in that back line, but Darcy Moore's role just in general has definitely changed. Let's look at some stats. So my hypothesis for this video is, has Nathan Murphy's absence in 2024 negatively impacted Darcy Moore's 2024 when you compare it to his uh, 2023 season and Nathan Murphy's 2023 season. So let's break it down a little bit. In 2023, Moore averaged 16.4 disposals per game. He averaged 6.2 marks per game and then 8.6 intercept possessions 
per game. Now, if you compare that to his 2024, he's averaging has dropped down for disposals to 13.4 disposals, 4.3 marks, and 7.5 intercept possessions. Now, we said earlier in this video that to the eye, we can see that these that this sort of Darcy Moore not marking the ball, not intercepting the ball, we could like physically see it. Now we can see the stats here. Now, if you compare that to Nathan Murphy's 2023 stats when they were playing together, you can see that Murphy averaged 13.7 disposals, 5.1 marks, and 7.8 intercept possessions. So Murphy's presence in 2023 complemented Darcy Moore's play style and allowed Darcy Moore to focus more on his strengths, which is his marking, which is his intercept possessions. So like we said earlier as well, I feel like Darcy Moore's role has changed a lot without Nathan Murphy. He's trying to play those two roles at the same time. And you can see um, here that without Murphy, Moore has had to adapt to a more pressure orientated role. That's evidenced in his pressure acts going from 5.6 in 2023 to 7.4 in 2024. In saying that, this has led to a decrease overall in a lot of key metrics for from Darcy Moore's 2023 to his 2024, which kind of indicates to me anyway, that he is missing his partner in crime, which is Nathan Murphy. So now we'll compare all of those three stats into a nice little graph here that you see. The first one we're gonna start off with is pressure acts. So in 2023, Darcy Moore's pressure acts were 5.6, 2024, he's had to up them to 7.4. And then in 2023, Murphy's pressure acts were 4.5. So between them, they were doing about 10 pressure acts a game. So I feel like Moore's increase in his pressure acts in 2024 suggests that he has taken a more direct defensive um, pressure responsibility. And I think that is due to Murphy's absence. Because again, he I feel like he is trying to encapsulate both of the Murphy and the Moore persona and way of playing. The next one we'll look at is spoils. So in 2023, uh, Darcy was uh, averaging close to 12 spoils a game. Nathan Murphy was averaging close to 10 spoils a game. But in 2024, Darcy Moore's spoils have gone down to 8.4. So that just shows me that he is not flying for the ball like he used to. He is not, and, and you can kind of see he's not really manning his man. Um, and we know that Darcy Moore hasn't really done that for most of his defensive career, but it's even more evident this year where he, he's trying to play those two roles and he is not being able to fly in for a mark or if he's going in for a spoil, he just misses it completely and it's the mistiming. So I think those stats come into it as well where he's mistiming a spoil or a punch in general and just missing the whole thing and obviously not getting that stat because he's probably in two mind. Another big stat is his disposal stat. So in 2023, he was averaging, Dusty Moore was averaging 16.4 disposals. Uh, in 2023, Murphy was averaging 13.7 disposals. And in 2024, Darcy Moore is averaging 13.4 disposals. So he's averaging three disposals less in 2024 than he was in 2023. And I think that's that's why he's, he's not transitioning the ball as he used to, which kind of leads to this next graphic, which is rebounds from um, 50. So 2023, Darcy Moore was averaging 5.1 rebounds per game. Murphy was averaging 4.7 rebounds per game, and Darcy Moore in 2024 is averaging 3.8 rebounds um, per game. A decrease in the rebounds from 50 indicates to me that Moore is uh, reducing his role in transitioning, reducing his role in um, in in disposal. So like transitioning the ball outside 50, because you can see that his disposal has decreased and his rebounds from 50 has decreased. So we're not seeing that transition more play that we were so used to seeing these last two years. So these next three graphs really go hand in hand. And so with intercept possessions, Darcy Moore was averaging 8.6 a game last year. He's averaging 7.5 this year with Nathan Murphy averaging 7.8 last year. With marks, Darcy Moore was averaging 6.2 marks and that's dropped away to 4.3 this season. And Nathan Murphy was averaging 5.1. So you can see already that his intercept possessions and his marking, which he is very much known for, he has dropped away significantly. I know it's only like one or two, but that's very significant, especially, you know, to the eye test because you, you can't see him doing these things and he hasn't for, for a long period um, of this season. And, and the last one we'll look at is intercept marks. So from 2023, he went to 3.6 intercept marks on average a game. Um, 2024, it's 2.5. And Nathan Murphy averaged about three. So again, he is increasing his sort of pressure acts 
and his other defensive structures, but he's changing the way he plays and he's not that intercept marking defender that he was for over the last two years. And the last step we'll, that we'll look at and compare the all three of them is contested defensive one-on-ones, which is an absolute mouthful. So in 2023, when Darcy was still playing, was playing more of that man-on-man -man style, he was averaging 2.6 one-on-ones in the defensive zone. Uh, Nathan Murphy was averaging 2.3, but now Darcy in 2024 has dropped to 1.9. And again, you can see that where he's not manning up, he's not being able to um, find his man. He's playing too far up the ground. He's pushing up too much and not pushing back. And we see that his man is always getting over the top. Those cheap goals, we saw a lot when we were losing. Saw a bunch with um, uh, Ben King was, was really Billy Frampton. But we have seen it uh, throughout this season. And it is becoming a really, really big problem. <laughs> And all those graphs show me is that Murphy's ability to handle the spoils and handle the intercepts and take those off more allows more to be more effective in his intercept marking ability, in his marking ability, in his intercept possession ability. So without that, more has to increase his additional responsibilities and more's game is suffering because of it. And and it, which kind of goes with our general hypothesis that Darcy Moore is having a worse season without his partner in crime, Nathan Murphy. So what can the Pies do to mitigate this Darcy Moore sort of conundrum and, and help his performance? So one, we need to find uh, another defender in, maybe not the draft, but it's definitely in free free agency and the trade period. That's why we're looking at Tom Barras. That's why we wanted Doherty the other year. That's why we're looking at Josh Battle. And I really hope that we get Battle from Hawthorne because, uh, sorry, from Hawthorne. Hawthorne's, it's in, he's in Hawthorne's grasp at the moment, but I'm really hoping we get Josh Battle from St. Kilda because free agent, give him 650, 700 because you have to pay overs for free agency for six or seven years or, or something like that because we need to help Darcy Moore out. He needs that partner in crime. Jeremy Howe isn't getting any younger. Isaac Quaynor was never that sort of Nathan Murphy defensive role, so we can't let him play that role because Nathan Murphy was good one-on-one. Um, -on -one. He, he he rarely lost a one-on-one -on -one when he was there. Um and, you know, the spoils and stuff like that. Billy Frampton isn't the answer. He's not that guy that is going to do that Nathan Murphy role. He plays another specific role. So we really have to hit that free agency, hit that um, trade period really hard. But that's at the end of the year. What can we do now? At the moment, I think the only answer might be Charlie Dean. Now, Charlie Dean was touted as a really good intercept defender um, when he came from Williamstown, uh, when, he came to, when he came to the Pies and got drafted by the Pies. Two years of foot injuries didn't help. Start of the year, it was a baptism of fire for um for Charlie Dean. Goes to the VFL, uh, applies his trade there, comes back, has a couple of really good games, and you can really see that he was starting to help the defense a lot. But then when you bring five players in, five players get dropped. Charlie Dean was unfortunately one of those guys that got dropped. I think Dean has to play from here on out. He has to play that Nathan Murphy role. You, I know you're not going to. Um, replicate Nathan Murphy to a T because Nathan Murphy was just an incredible guy uh, and and one that we are going to rue that he's not playing with us anymore. Of course, the head and and you know it, it, and health is 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 paramount and and we love that and we love that he's looking after himself. But selfishly, for our game, it does suck that he that he's not playing. But you know we want to look after his health. We want to look after the longevity of his life. The third thing that we can do is just get a little bit more of a support in the midfield. The mids are letting these midfielders or opposition midfielders and um, half forwards and stuff just run the ball so easily. And we're getting beat on transition so quickly. And we weren't doing that in 2023. That wasn't happening in, in 2022 either. We were be being able to win the ball back. We can't win the ball back between the arcs at the moment. We're the second worst for it in the league over the last six or seven rounds. Our mids have to apply more pressure and and help out the defense because once it once it comes out of our forward line, those mids are just letting down the mids just run through and it, our forward line is getting bombarded. That's why um, uh, Gold Coast had what, what was it like sixty eight inside fifties uh, last week, and that just can't happen. You're not going to win lots of, lots of games of football when the other team is having about seventy um, inside fifties. So look, in conclusion, I do think that the absence of Nathan Murphy has negatively and undeniably impacted Darcy Moore's game in 2024. There is a chance of redemption, though, because Darcy Moore is a very proud guy. He is not going to let, you know, all this media huff off question his captaincy. I've seen people online say strip him of his captaincy. Like, that's just so stupid. Like, that, like that's... 
That's really silly, right? That's that's crazy, absurd. That's not going to happen. Dusty Moore's a very proud dude. Um, and he's going to want to improve his game. Of course, he's going to want to improve his game. Of course, they're going to be talking about, not this specifically because I don't have a lot of stats. These are just the stats that I found. Um, they're going to be working on his craft every single game. But I do think that uh, Charlie Dean needs to play and chuck hell forward if you have to. And they have Charlie Dean as that um, as that extra defender down there. But Darcy Moore needs support, whether that's this year or hitting the free agency trade period really hard um, during this offseason to help Darcy out. We'll just chuck Darcy more on the forward line. We'll see what happens then. But look, guys, this has just been a video a bit different with graphs and hypothesis, and I feel like I'm at school again. Let me know what you thought of it. Do you want to see more videos like this? Let me know in the comments down below. But until then, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your family, tell your friends, tell your pets, and until next time, double shackers. I'll sweep you later. What's happening? Why is he...